When it comes to wildlife photography, nothing beats working on the doorstep. I've been away from Hertfordshire for many springs over the last few years and missed out on the opportunity to catch up with the local wildlife. Many subjects I've enjoyed working with throughout my life and really missed over the last couple of years. Donning my old faithful jacket and preparing my knees for a battering, it's always fun to get out into the local fields and head out and look along the tractor tram lines for one of my favourite subjects to step out and photograph in the spring. Right then, brown hairs. So for the last couple of days, I have been out close to home looking for one of my favorite subjects, and that is the brown hair. Um, I photographed brown hairs since I was like 14 years old, growing up on a farm in Hertfordshire. And so now that I'm back in Hertfordshire for a little bit, I know these fields and I know where to find them. And I thought as the photography show has been canceled and a lot of the work that I've got on um, has been pushed a little bit further into the future, it's a great chance to get out, get local, and go after one of my favorite subjects because now I've got a lot of evenings, a lot of time, and I can just go and enjoy some local wildlife photography. So I thought I'd take you behind the scenes and give you some tips, tricks, of how I get out and photograph hares, how I stalk them, get close, um, so that when we're not in this global crisis, you might be able to get out uh, and find some for yourself. So uh, let's get into it. Right, so as the light is starting to get a little bit better now, um, I thought I'd quickly run through my equipment before we go up to the top field and see if we can find some hares. Um, really basic, easy stuff that I've got with me. Firstly, my binoculars. Absolutely key for finding hares because you need to spot them at a distance. If you spot them when they're too close, the likelihood is they've seen you, they're off, they're running down the field and you just will not catch up with them. You wanna spot them at a distance when they're feeding, when they're really relaxed and then just slowly move in. Make sure the wind direction's great. Today it's blowing straight towards me. That's ideal for where we're going. And then I'm just gonna make my way up the field towards them and hopefully we'll get close for some pictures. Now, next up with me is the camera of choice. Um, I've got my Nikon Z6 with a 1.4 teleconverter and my 302.8. Um, it's a pretty hefty chunk, but it's just brilliant for hairs. Focus is so fast. Focal length of 420 mil, I find absolutely fine. Um, and the bright F4 aperture means that I can get those nice out of focus backgrounds, but also work right until the sun's going down. Of course, I've got my teleconverter end caps, so I can take that off, drop it down to 2.8 as well, and work till it's pretty much dark. Um, and the Z6 is the only camera that got with me. Um, so a lot of people are asking me about firmware three, what I think about it. It's the only camera I brought with me this afternoon, and I've been using it for the last few days. And I've got to say, it really is performing very well. Um, but we'll talk about that more in a future video. Other than that, I've got the bean bag with me. Um, reason I'm carrying the bean bag instead of a tripod is it's far easier to stalk animals with a bean bag than it is a tripod. You can move it forward in front of you. Um, it's a nice low angle on the ground that's perfect for hares. Um, but also because the legs aren't splayed out of a tripod, it doesn't disturb all the vegetation around you um, and kind of just make it more difficult and cumbersome to get across the field. I like to keep my gear while I'm stalking animals nice and tight, nice and small, and that's gonna make it far easier for me to move across the terrain um, and get close to my subjects. But now that light is just looking absolutely great. We better get to the top field and see if there are any hairs about. Right, so I'm at the top of the hill and the fields that I'm looking over are where I've been seeing the hares over the last couple of nights. Huge field off to the uh, left hand side of me um, has been really good, but it's a bit boring. You know, the vegetation's really quite low. Um, it's a nice big open field that's great for the hares and they've been feeding in the middle. And over the last couple of nights, I've even managed to get within like six, seven foot of the hares by crawling across it. But with the background just being green or you know, the trees in the background, it's, it's not really that interesting. Um, and I really want something a little bit different. But luckily enough, last night, the um, hares, um, when it was well too dark to photograph them anymore, they kind of moved across into this field. 
that is behind me here. Now, the vegetation in this field is a lot higher. Um, that's really nice for those foregrounds, those out of focus foregrounds, stuff like that. And also when you're low enough, because we're in a high point here, um, the background can be of the sky. And um, it just gives you the opportunities for something a little bit different. You know, you could go for high key pictures or um, maybe just get some nice tones in the sky as the sun goes down. Um, that, you know, just add something a little bit different to those pictures. You see so many pictures of brown hairs and stuff with just pure green background and I've got loads of those. Um, so I would like to try and make something a little bit new for the portfolio is always what I'm after. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit this out, stay at the top of the hill, just look across the field because right now the hairs could be sat down. If they're sat down in the longer vegetation, I'm not gonna be able to see them. If I try and make my way across that field and spook them, they'll be up, they'll be gone, and I'll have no chance to get close to them uh, this afternoon. But if I just sit still, and it is quite amazing, a hair is right behind me and it's going to run across in the background. It's just there. He's in the long vegetation here and he's just running across behind me. I don't know if you can see that, but he's coming right through into a great position. So we're going to have to get some pictures. He's coming right around behind me. Where is he going to go? Right, so I've come down to uh, where the hare ran past me too. Came to these tram lines I'm currently sat on and uh, it's run off down to the other side of the field. Um, pretty handy because when he stopped, there were two hairs at the end. Ah. And there we go. So, probably about 50, 50 meters ahead of me, there's a brown hair in the field. Sat down feeding, really nice position. Perfectly, he's uh, upwind of me. That's nice, and he's already calm, he's just feeding away, it's really nice. Now with these tram lines that I've got, I'm going to push myself along, crawl along this, and slowly get a little bit closer. Um, this is the technique that I've been using over the last couple of days. Get in to within 40, 50 meters, then you can get low down on the ground, um, into a crawl first, you know, on your hands and knees. And then from there, you're gonna have to get right in your front, pull yourself forward. It's uncomfortable, it's painful, and especially at the moment whilst this ground is bloody rock hard. Um, it's a pain on the knees, but it has allowed me to get super close, you know, like five, six feet away um, from the hairs. But I've had kind of mixed conditions, a lot of overcast days um, that's made some nice portraits but I'm hoping that we get some better light tonight um, and largely I'd love to be able to get uh, maybe just a bit of a different background maybe some sky something like that would be great right so after completing my crab walk I've kind of reached my 20 meter mark that's my usual bed in um, and it's front crawl from here on out. Now, the hare, he sat probably, I don't know, 20 meters, maybe 25 meters away. It's bobbed down. He's not looking around and he's not feeding. That means he's kind of a little bit more aware at the moment. So for the moment, I'm just gonna sit tight. And uh, once he starts feeding again, we'll then probably crawl forward. Um, a little bit more but the light's just about to come out it's going to completely change what the field looks like but i'm keeping my eyes over the other side because this hair is one of two that i could see so i know that somewhere off to my right hand side there's another one and they can so easily just pop up and kind of run into your frame. So you want to keep looking around. And even though the wind is coming straight towards me, be aware that they can just turn up right over your shoulder as well. Because they'll be more comfortable that side as well, because they know you smell. But the light's creeping across the field now. That's great.
hopefully in the next couple of minutes um, he'll get back to feeding and we can start to advance and move our way towards him. Meters closer. We've still got a fair way to go, but the hair still sat tight, not moving too much. So we're just gonna wait it out for a little bit. Right, so that was absolutely wicked. The hair that I was crawling up to, uh, you just stayed there, wasn't bothered. And then another hair just came straight over the top of the hill. They both jumped up together. Uh, one of them ran towards me a little bit, and saw me, and then they ran up the other end of the hill. Uh, probably got a handful of pictures. There might be a couple of good ones there. But now at the other end of the field, um, there's about six hairs all sat together. With the light being how it is, I just don't think there's going to be a chance for some pictures. I might try and push down there quite fast and see if I can get close. But because they're all running around and milling about, they might be a little easier to get close to. Right, so after seeing the six hairs from over there, I used my crab walk, moved in. Um, I'm now just overlooking them. I was going to get a bit closer, but... There's a lovely farmhouse in the background um, and it's meant that I've been able to get some nice shots of the hares uh, kind of in their environment, in the context. And they're the sort of pictures that as a professional photographer are so useful. Um, you know, people are always going for those like tight in portraits and everything. There's loads of those on the market, but the shots with those human interactions, a farmhouse in the background, something like that, it just makes a totally different picture and something that a lot more people are looking for. Um, great one to have in the portfolio. So I'm gonna stay here, get a few more of those. Um, this will probably be it for this afternoon, for this evening's vlog. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned a few tips for your own photography. Um, I'm going to be doing this over the next couple of days, staying in the field to local to home and getting a few more pictures. So I'll splice some extra ones in at the end of this video. But of course, if you've enjoyed this, um, you want to see more wildlife photography content, be sure to subscribe for future videos. And um, there's more coming out soon. Review of the uh, Z6 for wildlife photography. We'll talk about the 302.8 and also show you some of my final pictures from Botswana. But until then, guys, stay safe, keep shooting, uh, keep focused on your wildlife photography, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Over the following week, I spent every evening I could out with the hares, uh, getting into position as the sun started to go down. It really provided some great opportunities for pictures. One of the key things with wildlife photography is spending the time. You know, if you go to a location once, you'll never get the best images you can. However, if you repeatedly go back, it increases your chances of coming home with those great shots. One afternoon, an overcast um, evening, I got my best clean portraits. A hare bounded towards me through the nice vegetation, feeding as he went, making for some characterful portraits when he had a little bit of grass in his mouth. A really nice opportunity for shots. My best afternoon, however, was when three hares were out in front of me. The light was golden and it spread across the field, giving me some really interesting light to work with. The position in the field also meant that I could use the sky as the background, getting some white and lovely late evening hues in the background just to make a set of images that were different to the ones that I've worked on before. As the hair turned, it ran straight towards me, giving me a final moment to get a couple of final portraits. Framing up, I used the sky as the entire background to get a high key portrait with a pure white background. 
an image that I've been after for a very long time and one that I was totally stoked to get. It really goes to show that working close to home is always one of the best places to be. Having the time to spend with your subjects, get to know them, the locations, work when the light is great, it really does make for the best pictures.